we need to understand uh, what is the renogram that you will get with GTPA tracer and MAC3 tracer. Even though MAC3 is the most commonly used tracer right now in the United States, GTPA is also used by certain scan centers. Subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from Prep Ladder. We need to understand uh, what is the renogram that you will get with GTPA tracer and MAC3 tracer. Even though MAC3 is the most commonly used tracer right now in the United States, GTPA is also used by certain scan centers. But before going to the renograms, you need to know what you mean by differential renal function or split renal function. Using any tracer, when you get a nuclear renogram, you can get an information in the form of differential renal function. What do you mean by that? So you can assess the function of each kidneys and the relative contributions to the net renal function. For example, in a healthy person like me, if the net renal function is going to be 100%, for example, my right kidney will be contributing to 50% and the left kidney is going to contribute to 50% of the net renal function, which is 100%. Likewise, if a person is having a disease, like for example, a cortical scarring of the left kidney, then the differential renal function will be different. In this situation, the right kidney will be contributing to 70 to 80% of the net renal function and the left kidney will be contributing only to 20 to 30% of the net renal function. So in this way, any renogram can give you an information with regards to something called as differential or split renal function. And what you are going to do in a patient with suspected renal artery stenosis is the fact that we are going to assess the baseline renograms first. These are called as pre-captopril renograms. And after giving captopril, we are going to obtain renograms again. And these are called as post-captopril renograms and we are going to assess the difference are going to see is there any difference in the first place and that will tell you whether the patient is having a vascular lesion like renal artery stenosis or not. First let us understand about the importance of DTPA tracer. Remember DTPA is a very very good tracer to assess the glomerular filtration rate because DTPA is something that's going to enter the afferent artery and most of the tracer will be filtered by the glomerulus and will be excreted in the urine. And the extraction rate of DTPA will be approximately 20%, which is the same as that of uh, extraction of plasma by the glomerulus. That's why it's a very, very good tracer for us in GFR. Plus, at the same time, this is a tracer that's not going to undergo any sort of tubular reabsorption or tubular secretion. That also makes this tracer a very good tracer for us in glomerular filtration rate. And let us see. A renogram of a patient with suspected renal artery stenosis and as you can see here with GTPA the right kidney is showing a very good uptake in the sense the peak is very good and uh, the overall uptake is also pretty good and the time to achieve this peak is also reasonably good and which means the right kidney is having a relatively normal GFR on the other hand there is a significant difference that's happening here when it comes to the left kidney here the left kidney is showing a significant uh, diminution in the peak plus at the same time the time to reach that peak is also slightly different but overall no like the peak is very much blunted here and we can clearly say that the GFR and the left kidney is very very poor. Overall if you take the differential renal function in this case the right kidney based on the peak is contributing to approximately 60 to 70 percentage of the net renal function whereas the left kidney is going to contribute to approximately 30 to 40 percentage of the net renal function. At baseline. Now what happens after giving captopril? Here the difference will be augmented. Remember, in the stenotic kidney, if you give captopril, which is an AC inhibitor, the GFR is going to fall dramatically. And in the normal kidney, in the non-stenotic kidney, if it's the case, the GFR will remain normal or it will even increase as we've seen already. So here the exact same thing is happening after giving captopril. If you see the tracer accumulation, even though it's slightly less, but overall it's pretty decent enough. The GFR didn't fall that much and the peak tracer uptake is almost same as that of the pre-captopril images. And when you see the tracing in the post-captopril images, you can see a significant uh, blunting of the peak compared to the, the pre-captopril images. And at the same time, there is a significant delay in getting this peak as well. Like for example, you got the peak uh, with regards to the left kidney 
in the pre-capital images at around five minutes mark approximately, but in the post-capital images, the peak is delayed to approximately 15 to 16 minutes. So any delay in the peak, it's called as Tmax more than two minutes. The difference, if it's going to be more than 120 seconds, or more than two minutes, it indicates a definite problem, a vascular problem after giving captopril. And at the same time, if the split renal function changes by 10% at least in the post captopril images, if there is a decline in the renal function by 10%, then again it is suggestive of some vascular lesion like renal artery stenosis. In this situation, if you take the split renal function after captopril, the right kidney is the one that's going to contribute to almost 80 to 90 percentage of the net renal function, whereas the left kidney is going to contribute to only approximately 10 to 20 percentage of the net renal function. And there is a significant decline in the split renal function of the left kidney after giving captopril. And that's why whenever you have this change in the peak time by more than two minutes, or if there is a decline in the tracer uptake which indicates that the split renal function is declining by more than equal to 10 percentage means then you can say that the patient is having a vascular lesion like uh, renal artery stenosis. In this case, you can probably suspect a left renal artery stenosis. And of course, this is a non-invasive imaging and any positive finding in a non-invasive imaging or equivocal finding in a non-invasive imaging should be followed up with your invasive imaging model like renal DSC. Here, the patient has been taken for renal DSC and it's very clear that the patient is having a stenotic lesion in the proximal part of the left renal artery as expected which is very much suggestive of an atherosclerotic renal artery stenosis. And coming to MAC3 tracer, again in the MAC3 you are going to do the same, you are going to obtain pre captopril images and after giving captopril at about one hour you are going to repeat the renograms and these are called as post captopril renograms. And MAC3 is something that is going to be useful uh, to assess the renal blood flow and what are the properties of MAC3? First of all, MAC3 enters your afferent arteriole and it doesn't get filtered in the early stages. It just goes into the afferent arteriole. And we all know that afferent arteriole is the one that continues as this peritubular capillary plexus. So, which means MAC3 is going to reach your peritubular capillary plexus where it will be primarily secreted. It will be taken up by the proximal convoluted tubular cells and it will be secreted. So the primary mechanism of elimination of MAC3 into the urine is by tubular secretion. And the extraction rate of MAC3 is somewhere around 40%, two times to that of the DTPA. And because MAC3 elimination is not dependent on the GFR, it suggested that MAC3 can be used as a marker of renal function or it's very good for assessing the split renal function patients with poor GFR where DTPA will not be very useful in that scenario. And what will happen in a patient with renal artery stenosis? Suppose uh, if there is renal artery stenosis, there will be autoregulation in the stenotic kidney. So there will be significantly increased amounts of angiotensin to near the efferent arterial and this is going to cause significant efferent arterial vasoconstriction and that will reduce the amount of MAC3 that's going to reach the tubules. So that is what you're going to see it as a difference in the uh, renal function at the baseline itself. So for example, if you take the pre captopril images, you can clearly see there is poor tracer accumulation in the middle and the upper pole of the left kidney in this example. The right kidney is reasonably good. And in the renogram graph also, you can clearly see that the peak tracer accumulation is much, much poor in the left kidney compared to that of the right kidney. And once the tracer is taken up by the tubular cells, if it's a normal kidney, the tracer will go for rapid washout because once the tubular cells take up the tracer, they are going to rapidly secrete MAC3 and will result in rapid washout. In the initial stages, the clearance of MAC3 is typically dependent on tubular secretion, but once the tubular secretion reaches its peak and the maximum, slowly the MAC3 starts getting accumulated in the vessels and some of the MAC3 can be eliminated through glomerular filtration itself. That is why in the textbooks, if you see, they would, they would have given that 40% of uh, MAC3 is excreted through tubular secretion and they would have also given that around 5% of excretion is actually based on your 
glomerular filtration. But that happens in the later stages, not in the early stages. But what is going to happen in the stenotic kidney? In the stenotic kidney, because of significant efferent arterial vasoconstriction, you're going to have a delay in the peak uh, as far as MAC3 accumulation is concerned because MAC3 will not even reach the tubular cells properly. And at the same time, because of chronic long-standing efferent arterial vasoconstriction, there will be ischemia to the tubules and the tubular function will be very much diminished. Because of diminished tubular function, the uptake and washout of the MAC3 also will be very poor in the deceased kidney, in the stenotic kidney. That's what is exactly happening here. So this difference will be augmented if you're going to give captopril. So what's going to happen if you're going to give captopril? So once you give captopril, you're going to remove this angiotensin 2 mediated efferent arterial vasodilation, which means you're going to disrupt the autoregulation. So there will be efferent arteriolar vasodilatation if you give captopril. So now there will be increased amount of blood that's going to flow into the tubular area, into the proximal converted tubules through the peritubular capillary plexus and that's going to increase the flow of MAC3 towards the tubular cells. And even though MAC3 comes at an increasing rate to the tubular cells because of decreased tubular function that happens in uh, stenotic kidneys, you're going to have reduced washout of MAC3 into the urine so that the MAC3 will start getting accumulated. So you will start seeing a kind of a rising urinogram because it cannot be washed out that easily because of very poor tubular function in the stenotic kidney. Plus at the same time, we know that once you remove this autoregulatory process by giving uh, captobril, you are going to cause a dramatic fall in the GFR as well. As I've told you already, in the earlier stages only, your MAC3 elimination is based on tubular secretion. In the later stages, some amount of MAC3 is actually dependent on glomerular filtration as well. And because of the significant fall in the glomerular filtration rate after giving captopril, your MAC3 cannot be excreted using GFR also. So that is the reason why MAC3 is going to get accumulated after giving captopril. First of all, there's going to be a significantly delayed peak. Number one, Tmax difference between pre and post captopril images will be more than two minutes. That's more than 120 seconds. Plus at the same time, there's going to be a pattern of something called as rising renogram. Rising renogram. So this is very classic of a vascular lesion of the kidney in the form of renal artisnosis. Especially if you compare the pre captopril and the post captopril renograms. And remember, using MAC3, your split renal function generally will not change. There will be no change between pre and post captopril images. Whereas in your uh, DTP imaging, definitely there will be a decline in the split renal function of the stenotic kidney after giving captopril. Whereas in your uh, MAC3 imaging, your split renal function will not have any much difference between pre and post captopril images. These are very, very important to understand. Music